How's it going, everyone? I am Splatoon431 here at some more Nintendo News. And here, if you have an article from MyNintendoNews.com, and I'll be giving my opinions on the news they mention. Alright, so Nin Nintendo NX indie developers discuss what they would like to see. UK Gaming Magazine Games TM recently caught up with a number of small independent developers to find out what they want from the forthcoming Nintendo NX system. However, it does seem as though the majority of them are just as in the dark about the platform as we are. Still, that didn't stop them from voicing what they would want to see from Nintendo's next generation platform. Okay. The Wii U is actually a great platform to develop on. Red Guacamelee having the second screen on the gamepad was a perfect place to put the game's minimap and made that game a great fit for the platform. Having the ability to play games right on the controller itself was an amazing feature for times when someone else in the household was making use of the television. While this was never a problem for a drink box, I believe the limited power of the system made it difficult for some third parties to bring back to bring their games from PlayStation 4 or Xbox One to the VU, causing the system to have less than ideal third party support. And that comes from Smith. Okay. Right. So they say it's a great platform to develop on. Right. And they say that the second screen of the gamepad is a good place for a minimap. Yeah, so you having a second screen like that, it can you can use it for things like minimaps or even just off TV play where you literally just have what's on the TV on the gamepad and then you literally don't even need the TV. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, this was never... Yeah, like they say here, Having the ability to play games right on the controller itself was an amazing feature for times when someone else in the household was making use of the television. Yeah, that's a very interesting thing. Thing is, though, uh, you need your VU turned on for that, you know? So, and when you look at the v VU controller, I'm, I mean the VU gamepad, if you just look at the thing, it doesn't it just look like a handheld? Just a really, really terribly big handheld. I mean, the Wii U controller is great, but it actually, if it were, it looks like a handheld. It's just a really big one that you could take with you and stuff, but you can't. So I think, so I think what's interesting here is that they're saying it's a great idea to be able to play games on the controller itself, and there are people uh, that say that. Nintendo NX could be a hybrid between a between a handheld and it could be sorry sorry about that and <laughs> where was I okay and that the Nintendo NX could be a, a, a cross between a handheld and a home console so you know, that would mean that you could play your games at home, yes, and then you could also play them on a handheld. So, it's literally, literally having them be the same thing, like, say, you're play playing this game at home, you save your progress, and then you need to go out, you continue playing that game on your handheld version. Now, that would be great. Yeah, okay, so, ne let's see the next quote. In general, I'd like to see a console that has comparable or more power than PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and with familiar input systems. For an independent like Rebellion, you want to support as many platforms as you can, because you want as many people to play your games as possible. As a developer, of course it's exciting to work with completely new power dreams, but we all have to consider the egg economic realities too. I like to see Nintendo putting in more effort to work with other third parties so the Nintendo NX isn't just a great earner for Nintendo, it can be a great earner for everyone. 
said by Kingsley. Now that's a very, very interesting point. It's a very, very interesting point. Uh, first of all, they say uh, comparable or more power than the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Yeah, it, ha it has to have more power than those two. It is the next gen. It is the next gen system. A system from Nintendo so it should have more power than those but oh man but oh man here's the thing though will it just be slightly above those two or will it or will it just actually be better than the PlayStation Neo and whatever uh, the next Xbox is gonna be called I don't know it it has to be it has to be at least somewhere close to those two i mean and when i t and when i mean that i mean the playstation Neo and the next xbox whatever it's called not the xbox one and playstation 4 because that's what's now what about what about next gen the next gen system has to be comparable with the next gen hardware seems seems to make sense for me and uh, here's hoping that it'll actually be like that. So yeah, for an independent like Rebellion, you want to you want to support as many platforms as you can because you want many people to play your games. Okay. So that so yeah, want as many people to play your games as possible. As many people as possible. So that means so that likely means that they want the ability to have their game on more than one system so like they can have it on the playstation they can have it on the xbox but they can't have it on the nintendo system because the nintendo system is going to be because the nintendo system is too different and they will have and they have to drastically change the game or take more time developing de developing on that specific version which they probably don't want to do so yes all right so the next quote seems to be a short one besides more power which everyone assumes it will have the main improvement we would like to see on the side of nintendo no wait the main improvement we would like to see are on the side of the nintendo submission process support and tools Everyone who ever had to create a VUE manual knows what we're talking about. G Gorsuch. Okay. Alright, so this one's talking about the actual way you submit your games to Nintendo. Oh, that's a very interesting thing to bring up. That's a very interesting thing to bring up. Right. Yes, support and tools. So what does this imply? What does this imply? How does Nintendo interact with the third party developers? Everyone who ever had to create a VUE manual knows what we are talking about. Hmm. Hmm. I think that says something. I think that says something. Probably that <laughs> probably as you can tell with you know the sarcasm there that it's n that it wasn't a good thing for them somehow i don't know but that's what they're saying i guess all right on to the next one yeah not much i can say for from that but they but it's clear to them it's a difficult process okay so the next one says we are hopeful that whatever platform nintendo makes takes steps towards the future in big ways more horsepower, the integration of VR in some way, platform support for different business models, and an easier publishing process would be very welcomed. The Wii U certainly posed challenges for developers on a lot of fronts, but Nintendo is a company that, devel that the development com community would support as long as the opportunity exists. It is hard to be critical, so I hope the new platform pays way for the success of everyone over the course of its lifetime," says Kirk. Okay. Yes, so the Wii U certainly posed challenges for developers and all on a lot of front. Okay, so once again, that says there was a lot of problems with the Wii U in terms of making games for it. Yes. 
and they say the the development community will uh, will support as long as the opportunity exists. So that means so that means they want to support Nintendo. They want to. They really want want to. It's just that it's just that they finding it very difficult. It, it's not worth it for them. The the integration of VR in some way. That's an interesting thing to know. Um, apparent, apparently, I think I heard this somewhere. This specific uh, quote is from um, from a developer that's working on a VR game. So I guess so. I guess that makes sense for them. Hmm. We are hopeful that whatever platform Nintendo m makes takes steps towards the future in big ways. Yeah. Now that's another interesting one too. Um, Nintendo. Nintendo does like to add something new to gaming in general with each of their new consoles. Um, I'm pretty sure the NES controller was the first with the D-pad, I think, you know? And then the SNES, you know, I think that's the first with the shoulder buttons. Um, and then you have and then you have the Nintendo 64 controller with the first analog sticks I'm pretty sure and then you had the Wii with motion controls lots of stuff and then and then well what did the Wii U have what did the Wii U have a, the gamepad yeah and streaming from the TV uh, yeah yeah I guess I guess that's cool I guess I guess that's cool but the 3DS grass <laughs> grass glasses free 3D <laughs> Now that's a very interesting thing. I mean, it might drain the battery, you know, but it but I'm saying that when you do turn the 3D on, you know, on games that work well with it, of course, it does look great. Now, I I turn on the 3D during a Pokemon battle and it and it definitely looks great. But in the case of Pokemon, it also causes this slight lag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Did I miss anything else I want to say? No? Okay, on to the next one. I don't know enough to give a yes or a no answer here. I do know that Nintendo is capable of creating some amazing, groundbreaking hardware that will get people excited and interested enough to at least consider a purchase. You know that Nintendo will bring their amazing gray games and franchises in a big way, and if they can get decent third-party support to rolling, then games will be there as well. Things can change quickly. Not so long ago, everyone was saying consoles are dead, and this generation would be a bust. But well, that couldn't be further from the truth. Well, um, looks like they didn't actually put the name for that one there. Okay, looks like they didn't put the name for that one, but whatever. Okay, so this person says, so this person says that from what I'm getting from this is that Nintendo is going to surprise us, surprise us, surprise us in some sort of way. Well, yeah, Nintendo does surprise us. They give us an, their new ideas, their new ideas on consoles, their various takes on how to play games and what they can do for games. Yes, and they also say that it's important for Nintendo to have good third-party support and they note here that how big Nintendo's franchises are. We, we all know we all know Mario from Super Mario, we all know Pikachu from Pokemon, we all know Link from The Legend of Zelda, you know, we, all, we know all these characters and their their worlds, we know most most of them is, it's that they don't, it's that they don't have the third party support, those games, to go alongside their own games, that's what they're saying here, and that's very, very true. Okay, so, ooh, so next we have MK who says, is wait M K C K G S A G are these are these like abbreviations for names? Whatever, I'm just gonna say what it says. Either way, 
I would like to see Nintendo once again genuinely engage with third-party developers. Sure, Nintendo has the characters we love and always will, but in today's climate, you must support the development community in order to have a healthy ecosystem. I look forward to seeing how Nintendo does this with NX. Okay, so yeah, that pretty much sums up what the previous one said. That, yes, they need to engage with the third-party developers more. And that third-party games are important and would go great alongside Nintendo's own first-party games, definitely. Uh, that pretty much sums up the previous post. Yep. Alright, so then CK says... I'd love to see Nintendo. I'm uh, no wait. I'd love to see NX become a platform that publishers and developers can rely on, so they can invest and make great games on NX right now, so they can keep on making great games for in the future. Hmm. Okay. So they want it to be reliable. Reliable. Now that's very interesting. So they can invest and make great games. They want to be able to make great. Hmm. Okay. So I think. So I think what they mean here is that so they can keep making great games in the for in the future. I think what they mean there is they want the console to be lasting. I think that's what that means. Because. Because they want the console to be able to last as long as possible. I think what they mean by that is that the Wii U uh, had a very short cycle. I think we can all agree, had a very short cycle. Because it wasn't very good, not many people liked it. In fact, not me. In fact, not many people even knew what it was. It, that that's what. It, that's how bad it was. Yeah. And so I think Nintendo's trying to do uh, push out the Nintendo NX. So you know they can just move on. They can just move on uh, onto the next one and try again. You know they got to move on to the next console so they can try again. Looking forward to, to seeing how Nintendo does this with the NX. Yeah, they want to see if they improve or not. They they want they want to see if they improve or they don't. All right. Okay, so now we have GX, GS simply that it is powerful enough in specs to compete with the current generation of consoles. This might prove challenging if they have a handheld standalone component to the console, but I really hope they can pull it off. Yeah, how would that work though? Because keep saying, everyone keeps saying like. It's going to be like a console handheld hybrid, and that's a very interesting idea. But how would that work? Yeah, here's, here, I mean, the best way I can think of it is like you have a handheld version of a game, and you have a console version of the game. Both versions are exactly the same, except the handheld version has handheld specific features, and the console version has console specific features, and do, and the and the console version has you know better graphics and stuff, better graphics and more processing and stuff because it's on a console, and and that you could and that you could. No wait, sorry. And that the save data for that game would be co cross compatible with both versions, so that you could essentially just continue, no matter which continue playing, no matter which version you happen to be playing. See, that's how. I, see, that's the way I see the console handheld hybrid thing working. That's how I see it working. So I imagine, but. The thing with that is th that they would have to make essentially two versions for each game. But would that be required though? But if it isn't required though, and the option isn't used as much, then what would be the point in the first place of having that as an option? Of having that be a basis for the feat of, of the two consoles the two consoles in one thing also how did that jack up the price because then it'd be two consoles in one 
a handheld console and a home console it all in one so would you so would you buy both separately would it be like an all-in-one thing and the controller is what's the handheld i mean how would that work it c i think it could work if they do it right if they do it right it could work and it could be a great way to play games but but they would need to do it right they need to figure out a way to do it all right and the final one ag says I hope to see fewer gadgets and a button smashing only Mario Party. <laughs> oh, that's funny. A button smashing only Mario Party, and I would like to see fewer gadgets. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I don't think Nintendo should stop uh, making unique controllers and such and the like because it can be good. Um, I actually. When I played Mario Kart 8 and Mario Kart Wii, I actually used the Wii wheel. I actually really liked using it. Because I liked the way that you could be more precise in the way you move. Instead of just uh, left, right, left or right. No, I mean... I mean, instead of going completely left or completely right, that you could go on a sort of gradient, if that makes sense, that it, you could be more precise. Yeah, but yeah. But I think what they should do is that they should make those kinds of controllers optional. So if anyone is not interested, they can just use the regular controller. The regular controller should be the default one. But... But, you know, if somebody really likes this idea, they, mm, they should be able to use it. So, yeah. And that, and that's it. And that's it. That's the article. So, very interesting to see uh, what third-party developers have to say on the Nintendo NX. And, judging by what it says up here, they apparently don't know much about it. And, that's... I mean, they don't know much about it. Neither do we. I don't think that's a good sign, if you think about it. I mean, they should have time to make their games and and get something out. They should have something. They should have something ready, you know, for the launch. I mean. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't think every single game being developed right now for the NX has to come out at the NX's launch, I mean, no. But, you know, sometime near then at least, you know? But anyway, I guess that about wraps it up for this video, so thanks for watching, be sure to leave a like because it helps with the channel a lot, and be sure to subscribe for some more Nintendo news. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.